Kick off the ground, goes up towards half to go to eight goals, eight fifty six. One point, the difference. I've just been speaking to Dave Robinson from St Leonard's coach now. He's gone for a draw. Tazzy, how do you see it? I think Model Warrior. I'm going to stick with Model Warrior. I stuck, I picked them at the start of the game, and that's the way I'm going to keep it. Ronnie Brain, Model Warrior. No, finish job for Model Warrior, and so have I. Back in the centre, and Leeson goes up, heathering and breaching to it, charging through Harriet. Tackled, gets the hand pass forward, but only as far as East Belmont defender coming away. Oh, awkward left foot kick there. Goes around the flank, dumped away there from Newton, and the kick was from Darren Bell. Well thumped away from Newton. In fact, they're over the line out of bounds. Good defensive work, Wayne Styles. If boundary throw in here, Meeson will do the ruck work for Mottawari. Can't win the tap down. It's in, in going hard for the East Belmont side, trying to force it forward there. Now they've got a chance to clear Mottawari through Styles. He goes back in the centre of the ground. Oh, McLaughlin leads in the race for the board. Bounces all good for Ramia as well. Also in there is Girardi. He's got a chance now. He steadies short into the centre of the ground and finds a teammate out there in Harriet. Took a chance there, Girardi. Could have bombed it long, but looked across and saw Harriet was a chance to take a mark. And Harriet didn't let him down. And he punt kicks up the centre half oh. forward. And a mark taken by Ty Mellon. He's come alive. The boys come alive. The big boy Ty Mellon, the young Tyro of the side, is going to have a shot. He's within kicking distance, I can tell you. He kicks from 51 metres. Oh, the kick's not a good one. He's put this into the forward pocket. Up in front, almost a mark. Then there to Seidel. Knocked away from him. Hand pass from Seidel's a good one. Lands in the arms of his teammate there. And Anderson who's had a bang on the left foot. One on the goal on fire. What a beauty. Early stages, final quarter. And... Anderson, Trevor Anderson, has bobbed through a magnificent goal on the left foot in the wrong pocket. Yeah, great goal, Trevor Anderson. And, uh, well, he just kept his composure enough to bang it onto his foot under pressure on the boundary. The ball, not exactly a true trajectory drop punt. It wobbled, but it wobbled straight through the centre, if you don't mind. Ronnie, it's not how, it's how many. It's a bit like golf. <laughs> <laughs> it's a goal. No matter how you kick them. They've gone to nine goals, 761, Motawari East Belmont, 8856. They're five points in front, and we played two minutes of the final quarter. And Meeson gets a tap out, but it's gone to centre. Ford McLaughlin overruns it. A chance here now for East Belmont side to clear. It's all in stacks on the mill. They all dive in on top of it. Bass in there also for the Motawari side. Gerard and the umpire says, give it to me, I'll ball it up. So Motawari doing the early attacking. A couple of minutes into this last quarter. Cookie. Tassie getting back to that last goal. Jamie Soil done a couple of uh, uh, immature things, I guess you'd call them in the grand final. That was brilliant there. Contested the mark, steady, got the hair pass away and set Anderson free. Here's the ball at half forward now. Up goes Millon's knocked away from him. Chance for East Belmont to clear. They need to pick it up clean and they do so through the agency. It might be Devi out there. Cut kicks the ball back towards the, the half-back flank. Here's a chance to the, the fellow with no hair. Canine comes in. Canine, can he get it? Not Canine on this occasion. Off his hands, over the lamp, boundary line for the throw in. Half forward flank, Motawari in attack. There's no Ruckman there, only Hetherington knocks it down. Canoon knocks it further afield. It's a bit of volleyball out there. We might have time for an advertisement here. No, we haven't because Craig Jeffrey grabs it. Punk kicks the ball back towards centre wing. Meeson's a chance. Clears the path now for Ross Matthews, who tumbles a punt towards half forward. And lacks a fortune because standing in front of the pack. No luck involved there. According to Ron Brown, he said he got a play in front. Is Trevor Anderson, who's been quite an interesting player since he came on. Made a couple of blues early, but he's made amends for those, Tassie. He's, he's been, been about play the player a bit, and he's tried very hard. Well, his initial impact on the game was a whack behind the head, and uh, he's recovered quite <laughs> well from that. He's gone in short looking for McLaughlin, so Henry's got a chance now as he picks up, goes on the left foot, long into the forward line. I think he's popped that one out of bounds on the full. Right down there in the back pocket, and it'll be Jimmy Cheetahs to relieve for East Belmont. Had to hook that back into the corridor there, did McLaughlin, did not do so. Cheetahs' kick's a good one, finds a teammate at half back, takes them up, wants to play on. He's forced into a bit of pressure here at the back of the pack, kicking off the ground. Oh. Mason, and the luck's a fortune once more, because a mark's been taken here. By McLaughlin again. It's McLaughlin, is it? Well, he's a full forward. If he's, if he's within 70 yards, he'll have a shot. He's, he's 71 yards out. He kicks the ball across the ground, and Mick Harriet drifts into the space, right on the 50 metre line and takes the mark, and he's walking back as though he's going to have a shot. A pretty horrific kick of the football, Big Harriet, and uh, well, is that just... terrific or horrific, Ron? Horrific. Horrific. Well, there's too many players in the forward line there, there's no space to lead into for the shorts, but Harriet's going to come in and have the punt kick himself, and as Ron predicted, he's kicked it horrifically, he's kicked it about 75 yards, hit the post! 
Oh, what about a pretty handy one, Brady? You're right on the line there. You said he couldn't kick at all. And he's, he's hit the goal post about three parts of the way up at 60 metres. He's kicked Terrific it. Terrific, He was going to kick it out of sight. He's a lovely oh, kick of the ball. Six points the margin. Cryo Village is ages. Take he it away, Tassie. An East Belmont kick out, and the mark's been taken by Hetherington there in the back pocket. So Hetherington kicks to the half-back flank, and he's looking for a teammate out there in shore. They all fly. No one can mark. Meeson's in there also. Also, McLaughlin has scooped out there the East Belmont player. Looked like Jeff. Slap forward again. That's Dendal, I think, going in there. Dendal goes with the right foot. The kick's been smothered by Mick Harriot out there and over the line for another throw in. So good pressure there from the football, side. That's Premier the one percentage footy. you look for, Ronnie. This mother was good because had Dendal got that kick free, he had a player free just forward about 20 metres away. And he was only trying to kick it that far. And uh, well done, Mickey Harriot. Started off well, Dendal. He's died out of the game a little bit. We see Hetherington go up. He takes the ruck work. Now it's Jeffrey again with a chance to force him forward. He does that. They contest. Now a chance there for Ross Matthews overruns it. East Belmont now. We see Ramia running off to make some space, but that was premature because the ball's been kicked back in the centre, but the safe arms of McLaughlin have taken the mark. He's got runners, but he ignores them. Goes back, complains about the man on the mark, and then goes back to centre half forward. It's a long kick towards Ramia. Good spoiling there from the Mottawari side. That was Russell. Now they're a chance through Matthews and Matthews steadies the ship for them. Yes, and the strength starting to show out as Matthews kicks up looking for the uh, ever elusive Neil Bath. Couldn't control the leather. And I think you'll find, no, it's spilt free and kicked off the carpet. Jimmy Genus. Bad footy because it's gone straight to Girardi. Oh, he's passed a bit wide of the big fella. Ty Miller. Oh, the bounce from Trevor Caddy. It bounced straight over his shoulder. That'd have been a ball dig. He'd have had yeah. all over him, Ronnie. Really. Well, Ty Miller couldn't believe his luck. That's right. He got the shot. It was like a big ball. birthday cake. That's why we use a knob long ball, Ronnie. You never know what's going to happen. Oh. They come back over his shoulder. And he just about hit him in the nose. Ty Miller couldn't control it either. He got the biggest shock of his life. That's right. Here's Neil Bath. He's uh, taken a mark. He didn't think he was going to get either. And Neil Bath comes in on the right foot. The kick is good. Centers the ball into the goal square. No mark is taken down there. Chance here for Belmont, a little hand pass out of the fence, good. Now they're still going to set the ball free. Now they've got to make something out of this run because they're looking like that in the barrel here. Up towards Newton it goes. Styles comes across the top and puts the fist into it and out of bounds it goes. Yeah, good tough footy and uh, the old babe, she's uh, always works hard in half back. Doesn't give an inch the tough defender. Here's a throw in. Big Meeson. Hetherington. Hetherington wins this one. Tap down. Goes towards Jennings. No one in there to get it. In goes Mottawari again there. A chance. Oh, a little bit too high there on that East Belmont player. And he'll take the free kick, Rowan Smith. So Smith will got a chance to send them into attack. Smith and got the ball half back. Goes now with a kick towards centre wing. It's an awkward looking kick. Oh, over oh, the shoulder there. Yep, against number 20. That's Cullen of the East Belmont side. And who is that cookie? To That's take Kelvin the Russell. Kelvin he hasn't Russell. done much wrong, has he? Kelvin Russell will take the kick for the Mottawari side. Looks into the centre of the ground. Goes now with the kick. Goes towards centre forward. Cheetahs is there. Up they go. Cheetahs tries to spoil. Eventually it comes down into the arms of Jamie Siddle. Now Mottawari a chance to clear through the agency of Jeff Shaw. He goes looking in short. But over the back there's Ross Matthews. Oh, good play there by Jeffrey. He's got a chance again. Matthews in there again. Jeffrey goes in. That was Shaw also. Coming out and missing the ball was Newton. Newton back on top of it. Jennings goes in also. Also the number 20 there, Cullen. Now they're a chance once again through Jeffrey as he takes possession, falls over at the crucial time, ridden into the ground, but the umpire doesn't pick out a free kick. Comes out now to Mare. Phil Mare against against Bath there. Now we see some help for Bath, but Bath's got a chance now to pick up. He does that. Goes with the right foot up in the air. The boundary umpire puts the hands up. I think this one's been touched and the boundary umpire will throw it in, Cookie. I tell you what, gutsy stuff. Ross Matthews had about four goes in that yeah. pack that there at centre half. But, geez, a tough competitor. He won't let this footy get away. He's just, he's a, and you wouldn't meet a nicer bloke either. Just don't meet him in a dark alley. Umpire throws it in. Hetherington over the top tries to slap it backwards. Umpire's pulled a throw here and the free kick's going to go the way of Mottawari and coming back to take this one. Just waiting on us. He is going to get this. That's Harriet. Well, Mickey Harriet, Harriet, I think you'll yes, find. It is. Well, Ronnie Brain said he can't kick. He just kicked one 65 metres. Puts the boot in this lovely looking drop punt. Down to half forward. Up goes Meeson. Tries to knock it on. Should have tried the mark. At the back of the pack, Rowan Smith gathers for his Belmont. Punt kicks across towards McLaughlin. Spills towards Jeff Shaw. He's got support two for his team. Oh, oh sure, seals it. Away goes. One bounce, two bounce. How many would you like, son? I'll have two only, he says. And I'll punt kick towards the forward line. Oh, Dendal at the back, but coming over and taking a beautiful mark in the last line of defence there, the Mottawari side. 
Can't quite pick up who that is. Ronnie, who is it? Kicked out to Harriet. It could be uh, the uh, very strong defence there of da Dale Finn. Oh, Dale Finn's gone to Harriet. Now Harriet's a chance. He brings it to centre wing looking for Meeson. Meeson against Hetherington. Over the top. Hetherington, good work. Goes on the right foot now. Kicks back towards centre forward. He's got a teammate down there, but it's been intercepted in the meantime by the East Mottawari defence, and Russell's taken the mark. Comes back out towards, I think that was Matthews. Back out here to Harriet. Harriet goes to Ford. Meeson's on his own down there. We've got a relayed kick. Meeson can play on if he wants to. Why can't he? The umpire calls him back. Why can't he play on there, Cook? Blown time on. That's the decision Fair there. Enough. Put the hand in the air to the timekeepers. Blow the whistle and signify. Stop the clock. You can't play on now, son. And the Yak has got to go back and take his kick. Right half forward. Grandstand side of the ground. 62 plays 56. It's a goal, the difference. Motawari, the short kick from Meeson in towards forward zone. Price runs over the top of the footy. In they go. A chance there for Canine. He can't handle it either. Comes back towards half back. East Belmont defending grimly. Oh, the kick off the side of the boot's going to go out on the full. I think you'll find it is touched. Oh, thank you, Mel Fanning on the camera there. Said it was touched and the boundary umpire right on the job. Agree with him. Up goes Miller, knocks the ball to the ground. East Belmont, they stack in on top of it down there. Chance in there for uh, Paul Johns. Can he get the ball free? It's intercepted. Here's a chance now for Kel Russell, who hasn't done a thing wrong all day at the back line position. He keeps the ball into the forward pocket. Half forward flank out there and Wamsley takes the mark. And he goes long looking for McLaughlin. McLaughlin goes for the one down. He can't mark. Here's that fellow with a oh, bad head. Do he spilt that one? In the meantime, his team made out there, Siddall's picked it up, gone with a rush shot towards goal and it's just offline through for one behind. Yeah, Canine there Canine looked a bit of a chance. chance, just spilled off the boot there but uh, Jamie Saddle did very well, got the foot to it but uh, off hands, just one behind and East Belmont should run this out of defence fairly easily because the kicking... Oh, sure. Oh, is that Jeff Shaw there? Yeah, was running away with the footy. It spills to Ty Mellon. He's tackled without it for mine. Play on as the call and taking the ball oh, away. Darren Bell, who's been a very good player for East Belmont. Yeah, just as well there for East Belmont. They look like they could have turned that one over through Shaw. Had a couple of bounces and lost it on the second. But his teammate there in Darren Bell was quick enough to recover. But he's hurt himself out on the bike track there. And we've got a boundary throw in. So they're one down out there, East Belmont. Bell comes to his feet now and gets back into the fray. Here's the ruck work. It'll be McLaughlin this time again against Hetherington, and Hetherington punches that one straight back whence it came over the boundary line, another throw in. 11 minutes of the final quarter. The final stands are showing at the present time. Mottawari 9963 training. I should say lead East Belmont 8856, and that's seven points the margin. Disagree with the with the uh, the knockout there of Hetherington. Just went for the band line. They're behind. They've got to get the ball back into play and win it. Here, they're a chance here, East Belmont. Kick up the woods, center wing position. The chance there might have been Girardi. Got the hand pass away, but uh, no one there at all. Now, Mottawari will be happy with the ball out of bounds. East Belmont have to make the play run. They have to get the ball, switch it across, and get it down their forward line quickly. No good knocking the ball over the boundary line, I wouldn't think. Tend to agree, Cookie. There's a throw in now. Meeson gets it, but McLaughlin's there. He goes with an awkward-looking kick into the centre where I think we see Harriet with it. Goes long, looking for McLaughlin. McLaughlin comes out in front, tries to thump it forward. It's three on one. Cheetahs thumps it in the direction of Bell, but picking up's Bath. Bath can't take it cleanly. In they go again. Bell thumps it out. Bath's back in there. They all dive in on top, and I'll tell you what, that was tremendous play by Neil Bath. Three on one, held it up, and given Mottawari a chance for another score as tempers become a little fray. Well, it's getting late in the day and the sun's getting high in the sky Ronnie and uh, the temperature rising out there and uh, as Tassie said temperature's fraying a little I would have liked to have seen Neil Bath just grab that one have a flying shot he just didn't grab it cleanly as the ball came to him here's a little kick across the face and go here's Shaw with plenty of pace Jeez. breaks away has one bounce Will he have two? No, he's gone the hand pass over the top. Should receive it back there from Peter Ramia. He doesn't. Ramia goes on the foot out wide. The kick is ineffective. It spills far too wide for Jeffrey. And over the boundary line, it goes out of bounds. And I would think at this stage, Tassie Hudson, you've been a coach for years. Wouldn't you go straight at the guts and try and win the game? He certainly would. He just should have got the handball a little bit quicker. He had Jeffrey further afield on his own. And Ramia had to wait for the handball and then had to run off with it. So that's cost them dearly. But they're a chance now through the middle of the ground as we see the big fella Phil Mayer go in. Now they're also going in for the East Belmont side looks like Smith. He goes with a kick forward. Meeson, great right working. Right.
Wing back and takes a timely mark in the last line of defence, much to the disgust of his East Bowen teammate. Well, I think you and I disagree on the we Yak's disagree. game today. I think he's played a fair game today, the Yak. I think he's been a bit of a rock and roller there. I thought and he was a bit quite, quite well. early. What about you, Ronnie? Can I have some support? Uh, well, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably surprised me. That heavy knock where they took, took the wind out of his sails. I thought the legs might have been a bit jellyish, but he's surprised me and come back. East Belmont going to attack up the woods half full, but Stahl stands firm in the fence and takes a good grab in front of the pack. Wants to go on that left foot. They should have read his left foot by now. He kicks too far for Roscoe Matthews, oh. and it's taken away from him by McLaughlin. Gets the hand pass away. It's a good one, too, to his teammate. Another hand pass, a kick into the forward line. It's at half forward now. East Belmont need to capitalise on these forward moves. Oh, but too strong a defence. A hand pass over the top. Lands in the arms of Wosley, and Wosley goes away. Very quickly does Wosley go onto that left foot, and punt kicks the ball back to the centre. Push in the back for mine. Got to be paid here, and it's going to go the way Matty yeah. Price. of Matty Price. Umpire called yeah. that one what? the other way. Made a bit of a blue. Yeah, he put the arm the wrong yeah. way. That's what held me up there, calling it for a minute, Tassie. Price uh, wanted to hand pass the bath. Umpire says you can't. Come back behind your mark. I wouldn't believe that. That is, I wouldn't think that's good umpiring, Ron. You are a great umpire, of course, in your own right. But Price comes in and kicks the ball towards half forward. Players up. No one able to take the mark at the back of the pack. Chance for Cheetahs. He can't handle it. Oh, in the, gee, strong play there by Ty Miller. Oh, no, Crash his way through the pack. Claim too high, said Desi Hodson. And claim too high, says the umpire. He's been a good player this second half, Ronnie, as Ty Millen. He's probably turned things around a little bit for them. Yeah, a real red-hot chance for the BAG award, and that's pretty good. It was by Rockies, 24-hour locksmith, and, of course, guest video uh, here this afternoon. And, uh, yes, Taz, turns it around for Motawari if he kicks this a match-winning goal. Grand finals have got to be won, not lost. And this guy's put his body on the line, certainly in the second half. He didn't do too bad in the first half either. In comes Mellon. Punk kicks for goal. Oh, the goal on has got sunburn on the roof of his mouth. That sails straight at the top of his head as he had his mouth open. And four points on the board to Ty Mellon. Yeah, great goal. And uh, I think you'll find now that stretches the margin to 13 points. We've been travelling 15 and a half minutes of the final stanza. If it can happen, as we know, gentlemen, but I think you'll find that, uh, well, the legs are starting to get a bit tired now from an East Belmont point of view. Tassie, can East Belmont come back? 69 plays 56. 13 points the difference on the Corio Billy News Agency scoreboard. Can they come back? No, they can't. They've run their race. They've played well. They've played with a lot of diligence, but they can't come back, I don't think. Back to the centre. Mason goes up and wins the hit down. But taken away here by Jeffrey is that he's claimed high as he kicks the ball, and he'll take the free kick for East Belmont to send him into the tack. They've got to get goals on the board, and they've got to get them quickly, and Jeffrey's a chance to do it for him as he punches kicks towards half forward. The kick out the centre wing there we see picking up for the Mottawari side. Out there was Anderson. Went with the left foot. It was an awkward looking kick. Looked like Bell picked up. Got in short to Dendal. He's quick to play on. Realises the urgency needed. Goes into the pocket. Steaming out there is the big fella for the East. Oh, dangerous kick off the ground there by the big fella in Hutchison. And I think the umpire's paid a free kick. As we say, Noel says that's what wins premierships and Right. Anthony Harvey put his body on the line there and uh, got the ball out of that pack. We're just waiting to see what's going to happen. I think Dendal's going to get the free kick. Out there. Dendal gets the free kick. He goes short. Not a particularly good kick from Dendal because dropping in from Motawari and taking a nice mark. I think it might have been Harriet, was it? Yes, yep, it was. Harriet, it was. And he has been felled after taking that mark. And uh, as an interchange goes on, coming onto the ground for Motto Warriors, Dale Finn, and coming off is Trevor Anderson, who looks a bit weary. And 50 metres is going to be trade, and Mickey Harriet's going to come up almost to the centre wing. He's taken plenty of time, Mickey Harriet. He must be tired. He, it's taken him 17 minutes to run about 20 metres. He comes up and kicks the ball towards half forward at the back of the pack, almost a mark. Push out. Michael Mason, the yak, is going to take the free kick at centre half forward for Motawari. Scoreboard, 69 plays 56. Motawari lead by 13 points. We played 18 and a half minutes of the final quarter, and Mason puts it on the boot deep into the forward zone. He goes towards McLaughlin. He takes it with the one hand, then falls to the ground, picks it up in the second. And the umpire says, your mark, 
Craig McLaughlin, so Henry will have a shot for goal. What, 20 metres out, almost directly in front. You mentioned at the start of the call, uh, very accomplished with that great goal he kicked from the, the bike track, and uh, he's been a great target for them this afternoon. And, uh, well, he's kicked three straight this afternoon, and a real opportunity here to kick his fourth. He's no more than 25 metres from goal, 45 degree angle. Ronnie, I hope he kicks this because his lovely lady works in the Commonwealth Bank in Anglesey, and she gives me a smile every time I come <laughs> into the shop. And he comes well, in and kicks my goal. He's put it right through the middle. I tell you what, I reckon I'm going to home. And Let I'm me just, just going to say, tell Cookie, you. Bronny, I think the one thing about, what's he kicked for, McLaughlin? So that, that was Ty Millian. That was Ty Millian that just kicked that. You yeah, blokes. I reckon oh, you're all on drugs. Yes, we're on drugs again. Ty Millen just kicked that, you blokes. Well, that was the uh, that was the Craig McLaughlin lookalike. Oh, Ty well, Millen putting that are. one through. It's it's uh, not his fourth goal yeah, at all. Oh, oh, it's oh, Ty Millen's third goal. Oh, Go on, you Ty. You've well, killed him today, son. Uh, they've sold me up a lady, these two blokes. <laughs> no more lemonade on the coffee now, you blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the setup. up Bottawally, 11 goals, 9.75. You'll probably still Eight get goals, 9.56. Ari Spilmer back to the centre. Hetherington goes up and wins the hit down, but it goes straight to Wisely. Wisely quickly. Wisely, Wisely. Quickly on left foot, up the woods, half forward. No mark taken and cleared at Meeson. Kick off the ground there by Jeffrey. Doesn't travel far. Trying to crash his way through the pack, Motawari player. It's taken away and taken it away as Ramia. Ramia goes long into the forward line where we see Newton with a chance, but good defence there by Styles. He's in there again. That's the little fella, Shaw. Gets it off to a teammate, goes with a left foot into the goal square. It's drifting across the left hand side and through for one behind. So, what was a promising attack has turned into one behind for the well, Phil, side. Phil Mayer, gentlemen, has kicked 2-3 today. And, uh, it's been a fair in that first that quarter, I mean, uh, the old legs are tiring, you see, and uh, he would have kicked that earlier. But uh, at the moment, a badly needed goal went begging for these Belmont side. As, uh, Here Matthews comes Matthews, punt <laughs> kicking it the half back, up high on the air, almost taking the mark. Harriet couldn't grab it on that occasion. The kick up the other way, spills up the, up the tackler. It goes to the advantage of Phillips. Phillips lines up as a flying shot for East Belmont. One point only on the board to Phillips. But they badly need goals. Yeah, they certainly do, Cookie, and uh, you know, good work there from the, that youngster in Darren Phillips. Uh, a good kick at goal, just a little to the left of the big sticks as uh, Matthews now goes short and uh, the, the experience now is starting to show with the Monterey side. And the experienced players coming into the game is we see Styles take that mark and he kicks out to half back where we see oh stealing the ball as the East Bowman play, but I think the umpire will call him back and let the Monterey player take his kick. Oh he's called him for a throw. No, he hasn't. He's called him back and said, Take your kick. Stop your whinging and take your kick, he says. That's it. Who's that out there, Cookie? Just trying to pick him up. Your mate, rises. Russell. That's Russell, all right. Russell will go. He'll go with the kick to the half-forward flank, and he's looking in the direction of Meeson. Meeson tries to thump that one to the boundary line. He can't do that. It's picked up by Bell. He's been run over the line, and a boundary thrown out of side of the ground. We've played 21 minutes into this, the last quarter of the 1993 grand final. 11-9-75. Model Warrior have kicked away. He's bowling 8 10 58. Back to the footy. Good work there from that little fellow there in Killeen. Gets a quick kick to half forward. Thump forward. Good play there from the big fellow, the Yak. But it's Shark by Hetherington who goes and kicks the ball, but it was well smothered. A lot of pressure. Jeffrey's there for the Belmont, East Belmont side, as we see also Vagona, but it's kicked forward. Opportunity for Mellon. Good strength. Good use of the body on Canny. The bouncing ball, though, bounces too quickly. And I think you'll find it's overload and out of bounds. Just to the left of the point post. Not a worry doing the attacking. Good to see you got Ty Millen right that time, Ronnie. You didn't sell me up a lane. You sold me up the lane before. I'll never forgive oh, you for that. It wasn't. Oh, <laughs> it was, actually, I think it was Tassie. Actually, boundary umpire throws it back into play. Neil Bass in there. So too, Ross Bath. Players diving in on top of the footy. Jamie Seidel is tackled. Loses the footy. Hand pass goes out wide there from a player. Might have been... Uh, is that Sneller back on the ground? No, it's he's out of just warming up. Just uh, warming up in front yeah. of us. I knew he was getting close to coming back on. I just sensed that, Ronnie. But it's out of bounds. <laughs> Half forward flank and Monawari in attack. 75 plays 58. And we've gone 27 minutes. 22 minutes, I beg your pardon, of the final quarter. See, the ball now is the uh, Bath. Good football, too. Back to him he goes, but he's lost the footy. Just couldn't control it. Just a little bit slippery for him. And uh, you'll find the umpire, Dave Chaston, will come in and bounce down. 25 metres from the Monterey goal. We've been travelling, gentlemen, 23 and a half minutes of the final quarter. And Monterey leading by 13 points.
bounce down. Centre half forward. Mono Warrior in attack. They've done all the attack and final quarter. Here's the knockout. Charge here for Bath. Gets the hand pass across. It's intercepted and taken away too. East Belmont doing quite well in defence. Two bounces. Hand pass over the top. Goes towards Jeffrey. It's knocked away from Jeffrey. Goes back onto it. Hand pass comes across to Ramia. Chance here for East Belmont to set something up. And they're streaming into attack. And they go forward now, looking down there for Newton. The coach been looking. Brad Evans in the last line of defence. Takes a well time mark. Held his ground. The ball came over the top. And Evans will clear for Model Warrior. And they're looking like the Premiership team of 1993. They go to half back and a nice mark by McLaughlin out there on the half back flank. He'll go back. Model Warrior, when they get the ball, just taking that little bit more time now, Cookie. Not as much urgency about their play now. I think they sense that they've got this grand final wrapped up. Yeah, well, there's still time for East Belmont. They don't want to get too over cocky, I'd suggest, as McLaughlin comes in and punt kicks the ball long towards the centre wing. Meeson is up, and he's been paid the mark on the centre wing position, and he's going to take about as long as he can <laughs> to get back and take this kick, because we're going to tick in a time on. Time on to the final quarter of Division 2 Grand Final for the reserves, and Meeson heads for the boundary line, punt kicks that way, touched off the hands, I'd suggest. No, the, uh, the boundary umpire on the job there said he cleared the line before it was touched and a free kick to East Belmont at half back. So the kick from half back comes to centre wing, looking in the direction there of Smith. Smith can't mark, but he's first back on the scene. Good pressure from the Model Warriors defence. McLaughlin picks up, thumps the handball back in the air, forced forward by Bell. Now a chance for Meeson. He tries to tap into the advantage of his teammate, but brings it back in, gives it to his coach Bath. Bath goes to centre half forward, and all East Belmont there, and the mark, I think you'll find that's been taken down there by... I think it's number 11, is it, for the East Belmont side? Anyway, they switch it to this side of the Deavy. ground where we see Deavy, was it? Ramia takes the mark, goes with the left foot in short now. Nice-looking kick there also, dropped by his teammate down there. That was number 26 for the East Belmont side, Smith. He goes back into centre-half forward. Now Model Warrior through McLaughlin again are a chance. He runs through the centre of the ground, goes to centre-half forward. A bad-looking kick again. Vagona's there. He can't mark. Also in there, buttering up for the Model Warrior side, and that was good football by number 17. That's Jamie Siddle, and Siddle sends him into attack towards Ty Millen, and he sees that one over the boundary line, out of bounds, and we've gone into red time. And there's the side. So on. Model Warrior have won the Premiership here in GDFL Second Division Reserves. 11 goals, 9. 75 points on the board for Marawali. They have defeated East Belmont, who kicked 8 goals, 10. 58 points. So the final quarter saw three goals, two to Mudawari and Ronnie Brain, just two points to East Belmont, and that was the secret of the game. The final quarter was conclusive and decisive, and Mudawari, who lost the reserves grand final last year in abysmal conditions, have come out today in sensational style and taken home a premiership to the Mudawari club rooms, and it'll be a big night out there tonight, Brainy. Yeah, look forward to it, Cookie, and uh, congratulations to both clubs. Great game of football here. The Warriors, well, they've added three goals, two in that last quarter to two points and that was the difference between the two sides. The skill level just coming out and uh, a very polished performance here this afternoon by the Mottawari Warriors. Uh, premiers in the reserve grade division two Geelong District Football League 1993 season. Now gentlemen, the votes please. The best man on the ground. I will start the ball rolling and suggest that the best man on the ground is the Mottawari boy in the number 18 Guernsey Ty Millen. It's your vote. Two votes Ron. Two votes I gave to Darren Bell from East Belmont. And uh, the yep. one vote I gave to my shoulder, I think. Number nine, Guernsey in Neil Bath. Neil Bath. OK, Tazzy. Yeah, I go the same way. I think Ty Millen was the best player on the ground for the Model Warriors side. I gave one vote to Dinger Bell of the Model Warriors side. I thought he was a good player in there for the East Belmont side. And the two votes I gave to agreeing with you, chaps, Barthy. Neil Bath. OK, I've got uh, three votes for Ty Mellon, so that's unanimous. I gave two votes to Bell. He played a great game, didn't he, for, for East Belmont. He never gave up trying at any stage and uh, continually put them into attack. And I gave one vote to Ross Bath, the coach uh, of, of the club and, uh, and, uh, and also the brother of Neil, so they can uh, wrap up the one between them. But no doubt about the best man on the ground, Ty Mellon, the number 18 jumper. In our opinion up here, Call of the game for guest video. You love the leaders of the band, don't you, Cookie? Oh, I love them. <laughs> Congratulations again to the Monowari Warriors and uh, a special thanks too to David Cook and, of course, Arthur Tassie Hodgson for uh, bringing us the entertainment here this afternoon. Great call, fellas. And, uh, 
I'm sure that the boys at Monawari Footy Club will uh, really enjoy the hours of entertainment that guest video have provided for them today. Monawari, Premier's 93 in the reserves grade and grand final. But well, Ronnie, and, uh, you, you don't win many grand finals. You don't play in many and you don't win many. You play, you're playing a few and you win half the ones you're playing. So those boys from Monawari today, they looked a good side on paper, didn't they, from last year. Uh, they had Ross Matthews did very well last year, but they had other guys come in and played plenty of senior footy. Brad Evans came back and played. Ross Bath, of course, been a good player on the ones for many years. He's back coaching the seconds. Neil Bath's a good player. Craig McLaughlin's played plenty of senior footy. Andrew Girardi, we've seen play senior footy. Wayne Stiles, a bit of a... Well, wow, he's a bit of a... Uh, what would you call Stilesy? Well, a draft horse. A draft Stilesy. horse. Babes, I love you, son. Yeah. He's always ever reliable. He's a real trier, isn't he? Wrong. And I tell you what, he loves to hit the body. He's Ty Mellon was another one who was a good senior player for the last year. Yes, played senior pretty. footy. Jamie Seidel has got... I was just talking to Moose Moosen before this game started, and Moose said, this kid's got the most ability of anyone out there, Jamie Seidel. He's just got to learn to yell and shout for the ball a bit more and not be so shy. Well, Moose is not shy at all. He can talk a bit on the radio. Cody Moose. Yeah, he does a great job too on K-Rock. And uh, yeah, every Friday and Monday morning at uh, about quarter to seven, Cookie and uh, the Moose... Great job. And plenty of others too. I mean, Mick Wosley, we've seen him play in the seniors, good player. And of course, the captain of the, of the, of the side there, Anthony Harvey, played a good game in defence. And also, they had a, a Paul Rumpf, who must have got injured, I think. He must have gone off the ground. Rumpf, he's a good player, played plenty of senior footy. So they had a pretty good uh, a pretty good second side. And in the end, I think Tassie, experience just uh, lent a bit of a hand there and was able to just steady them when things looked a bit crooked at one stage. A little bit of experience. And then Ty Millen just exploded at centre half forward and he frightened the Christ out of a few packs. I think, Mono, I think East Belmont threw everything they had at them. And I think East Belmont played to the maximum of their ability. And, and just that's skill level as players started to get a bit tired and the constant little errors that the East Belmont players were making where, where East uh, Mottawari just seemed to get their goals a little bit more ease and as you said you look through those Neil Barth played in the grand final senior side last year, Ross Barth in the grand final, Ty Millen, all these players you mentioned, when you drop those guys back to seconds footy they come down a notch, but you don't come down in ability, and, and it showed out here today. But full credit to the East Belmont side, I thought they were tremendous, eh? Best players for East Belmont, Craig Jeffrey, who was none better than him, I think. He was a tremendous player, the number one Guernsey for East Belmont. Ramy have played quite well. McLaughlin, I'm impressed with him. I'm amazed he doesn't play senior footy. He's a very skillful player. Well, he's played, uh, Craig McLaughlin Henry, as he's known, has played in an anarchy... Um, or losing grand final side against Werribee here back in 89, then transferred out to... I'd like to introduce Mr. Noel Fanning from Guest Video Productions to make a presentation to the best player on the ground. Okay. Um, on behalf of the... Uh, best player for Guest Video. On behalf of the uh, boys of Guest Video up there, Ron Brown, David Cook and Arthur Tassie Hudson, they've uh, taken a vote for the player of the uh, grand final here in the reserves and they've seen fit to give it to uh, Monowari's Ty Millen. Pretty popular choice. I think we've got one right, Brady. Ah, at last, the Guest Video boys have got it right. Oh, we've been running all year, they reckon we've got this one right. Uh, Ty Millen, what a sensation. Congratulations, game. Ty. Have you got anything to say? Well, <laughs> pretty, pretty emotional for the our first, first grand final we've ever been in. I'd just like to thank all the boys that backed us up all day. Great effort. Tim Hall did it for you, mate. And your son, Jack. And I'll just like to say, well done, fellas. We did it. The first race is good to them. Pretty well done, Ty. Yeah, Ty Mellon. On behalf of the District League and its member clubs, I'd like to congratulate Monterey on their win. You Commiserate with East well. Belmont. They've been runners up a few times, and I'm sure that their win will, won't be long down the track. But to not worry, you've set the scene for your seniors today, and uh, that's your first win, I understand, in reserves. And I'd like uh, the captain, Anthony Harvey, and coach Ross Barth to come up and receive the Premiership Cup. Congratulations, Anthony. Well done, Ross. Congratulations, mate. There she is, mate. <laughs> Uh, we come here last year as losers. Talk up louder. Talk up, just talk louder. We came here last year as losers and... Can you hear me? Turn it off on me. Thank you. That was easily done, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll make my speech later on tonight. You'll even see. 
I'd just like to thank, I'd like to thank a few people, Ross especially, um, Toby and the blokes on the committee, all the work they do around the club, everyone who works around the club, um, especially the 21 blokes who are out there with me today, and all the other blokes who played during the year. Thanks a lot, fellas, for being here, guys. Well, I'm very happy, Anthony Harvey, the uh, reserves grade skipper. Just uh, like to congratulate. I just like, just like to congratulate you guys. Uh, top effort. Hopefully there'll be a couple, of, couple of flags there tonight. Congratulations. Thanks, fellas. Enjoy yourself. He'd be very, very happy that he's led his side here as a captain coach to a victory here today, Ronnie, and, and I'm sure that he'll be also looking forward to seeing if their seniors can pull it off and make it a double header for the Mottawari side. Yes, yeah, certainly, uh, Taz, and, uh, well, a great effort by uh, both sides. Noel Fenny, I think you'll find has got an interview for us too. And, uh, well, Ross, um, congratulations on a uh, premiership. Well done. Uh, been a long time coming. They tell me Mottawari have never won a reserves premiership no. before. Is that right? They've had a side game for 24 years and they haven't won one yet. Runners up last year. Well, that's, uh, that's tremendous. Uh, Ty Millen put in a big one for you today. Uh, probably the best player out there. Yeah, need to kick a few goals and he was a bloke to do it. Man up to do it. Yeah, well, there's a bloke up there in the broadcast box by the name of Ron Brown who's obviously going to have an ink with you later on in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, better make it pretty soon, otherwise it won't be worth talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Ty, congratulations again. Thanks very much. OK, there we go. A very happy reserves grade coach of the Monomori Footy Club in Ross Bath. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a few inks out at Monomori this evening, Tassie Hodgson. There, there certainly will. And, and having experienced the same thing last year, it certainly goes on for four of the greatest days of your life. You can get married, you can have a baby, and they're all quite equal with that magical one day in September when you pull the premiership off, as you would well know yourself, Ronnie. Yes, Wearing I was lucky enough to play it yeah, in the black and red. Newtown and the 78 uh, Premiership side. And, uh, yeah, great feeling. And uh, congratulations to the Mottawari Footy Club. And uh, we wish their club well in the future and, of course, here this afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed the call. This has been Ronnie Brain and David Cook. And, of course, Arthur Hudson. And congratulations to Mottawari Football Club. Hoping you've enjoyed the call as much as we have of bringing it to you. Our director, Noel Fanning, and our boys doing a great, great job. Great job. Yeah, top job here this afternoon. And hope you've enjoyed the... Uh...